the HTML table element is a great web old way to showcase data structures using rows and columns. As we can all imagine, it becomes incredibly critical to make sure we're showcasing our data, whether it's health data or financial data, exactly in the way that it was intended to be shown. While this isn't as complex when dealing with a static table, imagine trying to make sure that all the rows and the columns are actually acting appropriately when you're trying to sort that data. We need to make sure that not only does that static data showcase the rows in the exact way that it was intended, so that each value corresponds to that row, but after the sorting action happens, that those values are still sorted together in the exact same rows. In order to do this in traditional code-only testing solutions, we need to really manually define all of our data and make sure that once that table is displayed, that it's loading as it expects it to. Since at that point, we can really hook into things like loops, we really have the ability to cut down on some of that weight of that code, but we still have to be very manual in that process where we're defining that data that we want to test, but we also need to go through and test a bunch of different instances for how that data is actually being shown. On top of that, we also need to make sure that each time we try sorting it, that it's actually sorting it the way it's supposed to, and that the integrity of that data isn't compromised. But this ultimately means that any time that we want to make changes to our table, we need to come here and update the different rows and columns, or just simply how the sorting mechanism is working for our particular table solution. So instead of defining all this table data manually, we can get rid of all those different fixtures, and we can use visual testing to make sure that we can maintain the integrity of our tables. In order to do this, we're going to use Apple Tools, and in particular, we're going to use the Apple Tools Eyes SDK for Cypress, which allows us to install a simple npm package, run the setup command, and we're really off running where we can easily create new snapshots and compare them using existing Cypress tests. To do this, I can start off by running that npm install command for the Apple Tools Eyes Cypress package. And once it's finished installing, I can run npx eyes setup where we can see that our eyes Cypress package went through and set up any plugins, commands, and even some TypeScript settings if we want. We can see that right inside of our plugins file, where at the bottom, we have a new require statement for eyes Cypress. So instead of this loop, we can remove it and we can say side.eyes open, where we can pass in a configuration object, where we define a batch name of table, and let's call our test name default, where now, once Apple Tools knows that it's listening for events, we can say side.eyes check window. And finally, we can say side.eyes close. Inside of our terminal, we're going to need to define our API key so Apple Tools Eyes knows which account to associate it with. So we can run the export Apple Tools API key command, where we're going to define our key. Where now we have our environment variable set, we can simply run our Cypress open command. Where now when we run our test, while it doesn't look like much inside of the Cypress UI, we can see that our eyes went through and it opened with our configuration, it checked our window, and it finally closed. Now if we go inside of our Apple Tools account, we can see that we have our table test, and if we open up these instances, we can see exactly our table there, and we can see all of our table data, exactly how it looked inside of Cypress. Now again, this isn't much, this is just a screenshot, but here we're creating a baseline so that our future test can run against this image. If we run this test again, we can see it go through the same exact process. But now we can see that we have a new test, where it passes because our snapshot is the same as our baseline. Now theoretically to test this, what if our table data wasn't showing up as expected? So in this instance, I'm finding each TD inside of our table, which is the first column, and it's gonna say it's going to remove that element for each of those rows. When our test runs, we can see that it does exactly that, it removes the first column. Once the test finishes, we can see that we see an error and we also get a notice from Apple Tools to check the console. Inside, when we select our new test, we can click inside of one of our cells and we can see a highlight of everywhere where we're seeing an issue. Even better, if we wanna see where this issue is happening, we can click on the code view where we can click on an element inside of our page and we can see the root analysis of what actually is happening inside of our code. Now we don't want this change to be our new baseline so we can reject this change as well as any of the other ones that get tested. 
which will make sure that our baseline stays exactly how we want it with the correct test. But realistically, if we look back at that snapshot, not only are we testing that that table data is working, we're also testing that everything inside of that table is working, including the header. So while before with our manual tests, we both had a test where we checked if the table header is loaded generally, but we also had a separate one that tested if the table data loaded, we can remove that test and we can say that we only want this test to check that we verify that the table data and the headers load. Now moving on to the next test, we also wanna check that when we try to sort the table that it's going to actually work. Now before, we checked the table once with all of our fixture data, we click the column sort, and we also check the data again to make sure that it was sorted properly. But using Apple tools, we can paste in that same snippet where we're gonna run eyes open, but this time let's call the test name ascending. Now before we click the sort, we're gonna run sci dot eyes check window, but this time we're gonna pass in a tag of before sort so that we can distinguish between that and the one after. But again, instead of this snippet where we run manually, we can run our check window again and we can say after sort, where we can finally run side dot eyes close. And once it's finished running, we can see that it goes through and it does a similar thing before where it opens up the eyes, it checks the windows, but this time we run that click command, which sorts our table and we run another eyes check. Back in our dashboard, we can see our new test where we now have four tests where we can see that we have those new ascending tests that are working where it goes inside, it checks the table, and then it also goes through and checks after sort. But we also have our original test where we have our default, where it's just the one single page and it's still checking that table data initially. Now, the great thing is we can do that exact same thing with all of our other tests where we can check that it's descending by doing two clicks and we can check that it goes back to unsorted with three clicks. But they ultimately all go through and run the checks as well as running the clicks inside of Cypress. And back inside of Apple tools, we can see that we have our new tests for each of our different types of sorting, but we have all of our tests and we're really only running a few things with snapshots that makes it easy to test the integrity of our table. So in review, we wanna make sure that we're maintaining the integrity of our table. And while we can manually do that by creating fixtures and going through each and every row and column of our tables, we can instead use visual testing with Apple Tools Eyes, where we can run our eyes open, our eyes check window, as well as interacting with Cypress to get different parts of the flow, where we can easily test the integrity of our table and everything else on our page. Where if that check fails, we can see exactly what's happening in a screenshot, but if it passes, we get a nice green check and we can continue on with our work.